All right, what's going on guys? Beastars episode five, the age where you discover why one's tail gets dirty. Jesus Christ, could they have made that title any longer? I left a little gift for you in the comments. I left a link to the episode for episode five of Beastars. So if you want to give me a like, a subscribe, because I show you so much love, I would appreciate that. But let's do it. So after last episode's performance, Lewis is not happy. So he's admonishing Lagoshi and Bill the Bengal Tiger. He's pissed off. He's like, what the fuck? And uh, then he reveals some information. We found out from the last episode that he saw the little vial of blood and uh, he hands it back to Bill. But what's surprising about this moment is that Lewis is not even angry that Bill is blood doping. He's like, look, I don't give a fuck what you do in your free time. You got your own animalistic instincts. Do what you want to do with your life. And then Lewis also gives a little speech about conviction. How no matter what you do with your life, if you're silly, angry, happy, authoritative, a leader, do it with 100% conviction. Don't flip flop from one personality to the next. And Lagoshi is like, is Lewis talking to me in this situation? And it's interesting because Lewis, when he gives this speech, has Bill on his right and Lugoshi on his left. So even though Bill is uh, giving in to his animalistic instincts and he's very hot-headed and he sort of quote-unquote ruined the performance, at least he's accepting who he is as a person. He knows he's a carnivore. He knows he's an aggressive person that needs to display his power and strength. Whereas Lagoshi kind of goes back and forth with it. He wants to act like this calm, level-headed, tranquil sort of person, but really underneath he wants to lose control and he even admits this to his friend uh, the dog Maguno he says you know it kind of felt good to just lose control for once like you know in my past 17 years of life I've always kind of held back I've always sort of maintained myself I've never really lost my head but in the moment where the play was going on, Lagoshi didn't want to maintain himself. He didn't want to hold back any longer. And Lewis, when he was giving that speech in front of like the press for the school, he's speaking to Lagoshi. He's like, look, Lagoshi, you have to pick. You can't have it both ways. You either have to be the hot-headed, assertive wolf that you are inside, or will Lagoshi remain the calm, introverted person he's always been? Ben, who has very little confidence and is always socially withdrawn. So we'll have to see how Lagoshi confronts that issue. Now, in the second half of the episode, we get some interesting relationship dynamics. We see that Lagoshi is still thinking about Haru. He still seems to have emotional feelings for her, but it looks like she's already having a quote-unquote relationship with someone else. It turns out that from the looks of it, now we don't have any sort of verifiable evidence, but it looks like Lewis is probably having sex with her. He's laying in a bed, he takes off his tie, and Haru sort of lays right on top of him. So we would assume it's sort of implied that there's some sort of physical relationship going on with those two. Now, how involved they're getting, we really don't know. And it looks like Haru seems a bit reluctant when Lewis sort of pulls her into him. So we'll have to see why she's sort of giving into this relationship. If it's because maybe it's because Lewis has some dirt on her or maybe because Lewis just has such a strong imposing personality that she sort of feels like she doesn't have a choice in a way. So we'll have to see how that develops, especially with the dinosaur festival that's coming up because at the end of the dinosaur festival, there's a light show where couples light up a candle and they put it on some sort of like a ledge or pedestal and the implication being that if you do that you'll be in love forever now i would guess if i'm gonna read the tea leaves here that lewis and haru are probably gonna light a candle at the festival and lagoshi is just gonna have to see the situation and it's probably gonna break him inside now he might 
turn very violent as a result because his heart is broken. He might start to lash out in physical ways or he might become more socially withdrawn and just become broken inside and very isolated because of the situation. So that would be my guess and just because you can kind of see what's going to happen in future episodes doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing as long as the execution is good. So we'll have to see how that plays out in the coming episodes. And then in the remainder part of the episode, Lagoshi saves Haru. He's walking up behind her as she's being attacked by the other girls that picked on her in the previous episodes. And Lagoshi and Haru decide to have a little dinner slash lunch together. <laughs> Now, I gotta say, the size difference between Haru and the Goshi is really accentuated in this episode. God damn, the Goshi is just towering over her. And she's sitting on a book bag as they're eating their meal, and he is just enormous. I mean, god damn. But I guess love is blind. <laughs> So anyway, they're having the meal and Lagoshi can't even ask what her name is. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, Lagoshi's such a little pussy. He's a beta male. Why can't he just ask her what his name is? It's not that hard. Well, they're really trying to exemplify the angst and the sort of self-torture that men give themselves when they're talking to girls. Because a lot of guys, especially in that 16 to 17, 17 year old range when they're asking out girls this is sort of the internal dialogue that they go through now Lagoshi is on the extreme end of that spectrum but a lot of guys will hold back and sort of prevent themselves from having relationships or friendships with girls because they're terrified of the outcome they're terrified that it could go sour it could go south and they could get rejected and embarrassed because of the situation I love how that sort of plays out and I love how they use the animation in unique and creative ways to emphasize his angst and the turmoil that he's going through just trying to ask what her name is. And really that first step is always the hardest. Once you sort of break through, then the conversation and dialogue can go a little easier. But showing how that first step can really be difficult was a great little insight in this episode. And then the episode finally ends when Lagoshi helps Haru buckle her shoe. She's like, hey, I'm not Miss Bunny Girl, I'm Haru. And uh, Lagoshi's tail starts to wag and he's like, I'm Lagoshi. And uh, Lagoshi stares in her eyes. And again, another nice bit of animation here. I love how they sort of blur out Haru's face so that your eye is focused on her eyes just as Lagoshi's are. And how he's sort of staring into her soul. You know, it's a window to the soul. And uh, he's really starting to develop that deep affection for her. So really great episode, guys. I can't wait to see what happens in the preceding episode. The animation and still shots were fantastic once again. The slow, methodical character developments are really interesting. And, uh, you know, just another great episode. Really not much else to say. The only thing I'll leave you with is I released a Beastars review just a couple days ago. So if you guys could check that out, that would be fantastic. If you could like this video, comment, and subscribe. I always appreciate that as well. But until next time, I'll catch you on the flip side.